Did you have any training as an actor? Not a sense of it, <laughs> sir. I used to watch the others getting their makeup on. I was, I was, you know, slapping the makeup, doing things, and uh, but doing uh, leads. And when John Hirsch and Tom Hendry started Manitoba Theatre Centre, they needed a nucleus of actors, and uh, I sort of brought whatever experience I had with me from one theatre to another, and was the first actor to step on stage for so the Manitoba Theatre Centre. You never took a dance course. No. You never took an acting course. No, no. You never took a writing course. No. <laughs> and yet you've had a career of how many decades? Successful. Well, I'll leave the dancing aside, but in terms of writing and acting, my God, man. Well, the, the what acting... What does that say? We're, we're in the middle of a theater school here in Ryerson. Uh -huh. Are you saying that theater schools aren't necessary? I'm sorry? Are, are you oh, 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 no, no. Very necessary. Very necessary because it's the surest most, most, uh, uh, you know, official way of uh, knowing where you're going and what you can do and what you can't do. It's a, the rest of it is a, is a John Kerouac kind of uh, push and pull, you know, on the highways to try to get work and dropping off and digging a ditch or driving the truck and doing all kinds of things to get you through a normal uh, kind of lifetime. But, um, with this dream in mind, and the, uh, so, so you know, but it was a long time coming. I should have got onto a writing course, for example. Never did. I mean, a three-week writing course would have put me in the right mood immediately, and would have told me that plot was important. <laughs> I, I, I wrote for ten years without a plot, you know. So, uh, so I was not your uh, average. Uh, Boy, uh, Boy Scout leader, you know, I, I was, no, I, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, 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 claim to be much of a professional either at that time. I certainly didn't have the money to go to RADA or Lambda, which some actors were doing. Uh, so that took care of the acting. I had to stay and pick up the pieces left by others. But part, partly also what we're tr I'm trying to explore uh, is longevity. I mean, the longevity of your career, and mm -hmm. you are someone who say, well, okay, well, I'll do that. No, I'll, I'll just do that. Uh, you know, I wrote a series, Gift to Last. Uh, uh, I write The Rowdy, Rowdy Man. Uh, I say to the person in Winnipeg, <coughs> I don't do small parts. I mean, there's a, there's a mercurial uh, drive inside there, Gordon, that has kept you up and on your feet and on your toes and creating for so many decades. Where does that come from? Uh, just fear of losing, fear of fear of failure. Fear, I was no good at school, terrible at school, but loved the friendships that I created or helped create, and uh, loved the uh, uh, just about everything about life in general. When I was a child, I was a happy kid, always, you know, the first to put my hand up if, to leave the room, always the first to, uh, you know, and uh, but I failed at everything. I said to my, my teacher once, I said, but I can't hear you. I'm so far back here <laughs> in class. I said, I can't. that's why I keep failing. I kept trying to, and I acted my way around, <laughs> around the, you know. I said, you know, if you put me up front, maybe I could do something. But no, I never got up to the, up to the front. Is the fear still there? I'm sorry? Is the fear still there? The fear? Yeah, fear of failure. Oh, fear of failure, oh yes. Yeah, and the the, pin, the pincent anxiety that my brother and I call it, that's there in 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 abundance. I mean, I, I've said to Charm, you know, I can't. Uh, I'm getting to a point where I really have trouble going into a crowded room, and she said, "Perform. You're a performer." So I'd have to act my way through it. But once I got in and circled a bit, had a wonderful time. I have a, a great love of people, and I love stories, and I love something new happening at all times, and I'd love to be part of so much of it. And I realized how lonely I was to not have it. So I, I stayed out in public, and I worked in public, and did my stuff, and traveled the country, which I love, and uh, able to work where, where I want to live. You know? so. so I never know where it all comes from in any of us, right? In, right. You know, in you or me or 
anyone who steps on a stage or anyone who sits down at a keyboard and decides to write I know. a script. That, yes. Um, is, is it fear? Is it fear of an you know, Somebody had once it's said it's a chromosome 11. Chromosome yes, 11. Yes, actors and artistic-minded people have a different chromosome than most. These are the people who have uh, a low attention, uh, you know, the attention deficit at school. The people who hate what they're doing, they want to think that something's better elsewhere, something they're more, they would, they would approve of and more adaptable uh, to. And, and uh, uh, so it's a, it's a curious kind of thing. But even if it isn't true, the 11, the chromosome, sets us apart just a little and says we're forgiven, you know, for doing what we do. And because we can't help it. Right? We can't help it, no, no. Imagination is one thing that I hold fast to uh, as being a, a key all by itself, that if everything else goes wrong, imagine something else. Everybody imagines. A bank manager says, I hope next year is going to be better. I, I, I imagine a picture, and we are all imagining pictures of how we would like things. Um, so it's in everybody's uh, sort of interest to, uh, to, to sort of empty themselves of, of all of this. But, and the thing is, too, I think there's a saving grace. I think it's rather like having a ledge in here where you can give anything else away or even waste or make mistakes or anything else, anything above that ledge. But under that is your reserve. That is your, and I think every actor has that who truly loves his craft. I think whatever he's got under that ledge, that's where he has uh, his riches. That's where he can go to solve something or to bring it back again, uh, revive it, regardless of, of uh, angry voices, you know. Mm -hmm the disdain that maybe some people might have towards this walk of life or the complete un, not, not, you know, not understanding and so on. But somewhere in there, there is that thing you go to. If I go to it at my age, I'm 18 again. I'm 25 again. I can go there and still find fragments of, how, of why I got in this business, the best reasons. And the best answers are sometimes in an area that you've kept for yourself only to make, make things happen. And uh, out of it, I have found uh, happiness. And out of it, I found contentment with the, even with the, uh, uh, the way that the business is seen and so on, the way we're seen. Uh, I, would, I still think that the creative individual is the most uh, glorious uh, kind of individual in our, you know, in any uh, entity. I mean, in, if in fact uh, a large country anywhere has trouble in the streets or whatever they're dealing with, an economy, they go for the arts. They go to the museums. They still hold fast to the museum yeah. or to the, to the arts. Um, their creative character. Their character is the thing that wins it up, wins it and brings it back to normal again, I, I think. Anyway. And where do you go to fuel your imagination when this, this part is low or in despair or where do you go? Is it people? Is it other art? Is it? Well, I suppose we all have certain uh, certain keys. Uh, one thing that I've allowed myself to believe is that you can change something in an instant. You can change it by simply doing this. You can get your mood going in another way by saying, I'm in charge of me um, and I can do this. Lynn Redgrave said, well, she, was, she had cancer and she died from it, but when she found she had a second cancer, she was on Broadway. And she said a line that has really stuck with me, which is, why should I stand in my way? 
other people are going to be standing in my way. Why should I? So she stopped worrying about it by telling herself, you know, why should I? Why, of all people, why should I stand in my way? And that, that made sense to me.